Welcome to Point Dash to Pointers of Fighting. I'm James. Let's talk about it. So I got another question on Quora. I'm on this app a lot. If you guys want to ask me questions, I get a lot of requests on here. So I'm on here more than I'm probably anywhere else. Uh, and I like to take y'all's questions and make videos out of them because they're content and then deliver them to you that way because it's kind of a unique way to answer questions. Now, Cora sometimes tries to take those down, so they're on my YouTube channel, P2F, so check that out, like, and subscribe. But anyway, I got a question uh, 22 hours ago. Can, can Special Forces beat MMA in a hand-to-hand -hand fight? All right, this, is, this answer is going to be the same kind of answer that... Uh, would be in almost any could this one be that one could that style be that one is this style better than that style okay it almost never depends on the style in this case it's mma versus special forces okay a lot of it depends on the individual that's doing the fighting one that's number one but also number two is these are two completely different kinds of, of fighting here okay with MMA, you're talking about guys with gloves, or even if you're talking about the old Valley Tudo days, uh, you know, where they where they struck with the palm of their hands because they weren't wearing gloves. You might be even talking about those days. Okay, regardless of which of which time period it is, mixed martial arts is a style that uh, goes by rules. Every organization has some kind of rules. Uh, for example, in the UFC, they don't let you stomp, right? But in Pride, you could stomp, but you couldn't elbow, right? And in none of them, none of them that I know of, you can eye gouge or bite. Uh, now, I know some of the Valley Tudo fights in Brazil, they could headbutt, you know, and it was legal. And so, but there are always things that are legal and things that are illegal. Now, let's talk about Special Forces, okay? In Special Forces, they're not learning anything with rules, okay? You're talking about, you're talking about individuals that are going out and doing clandestine missions where they're, most of the time, they're being called in because whatever's going on, they need to handle it. It's more than the infantry can deal with it's more than the artillery can deal with or is something that needs to be done quietly and quickly so the style of fighting they're going to learn is is take you out fast as possible you know it ain't about no no biting no stomping no eye gouger and no this no that it's take you out fast as possible you know if that's punching to the adam's apple if that's shoving my thumb through your eye until it's all the way to the knuckle you know if that's grabbing your Adam's apple and ripping it out, this is the kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat that they're learning, right? This is a different kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat than what an MMA fighter is learning. Um, I have a couple friends on my Facebook who were military and do MMA, and I'm going to actually ask them about this question also. But I would say that... If it turned out that a special forces person who doesn't train MMA somehow ended up getting in a fight with an MMA fighter who wasn't military or wasn't special forces, I'm probably going to give my edge to the special forces guy. And the reason why is because even though the MMA guy is trained to beat people up, they're not trained to kill people. Special forces guys are trained to neutralize the threat now. It isn't about throwing kicks and punches until you knock the guy out or you choke him out, get him on the ground. There's none of that. None of that. They're trying to survive immediately. And most of the time that's going to involve using the environment as well. So to a special forces guy, it might start as hand-to-hand -hand combat and then he might see a big boulder and pick it up and bust you in the head with it. It's just what they're going to do because they're trained to neutralize a threat now. And uh, if you're talking about these two guys putting these two guys in a cage and making them fight, 
with rules, yeah, the MMA guy is going to win because now you're taking away all the special forces operators' weapons. You know, no eye gouging, no scratching, no biting, no pulling, no grabbing the nuts and pulling them, no, you know, no ripping the throat out, no shoving your fingers down his throat until, until you kill him. None of that stuff. They're not using any of the things they learn. They learn dead, deadly techniques, techniques that will kill you, not techniques that are going to put you down according to the Queensberry rules or the, the MMA uh, UFC Bellatar one championship rules. So I think, you know, if you make it a MMA match, MMA guy's going to win. If it's in the street, special forces guy's going to win almost every time. And then if it's in the street, it's going to get, it's going to be worse for the MMA guy because the special forces guy is going to start hand to hand until he finds something that can neutralize the situation quicker. And then he's going to use that. So my vote there. It's going to special forces, guys. So, what do you think? Leave me some comments below. I'm going to tag a couple guys. I think Shane Crutchin, I'm definitely tagging him. Uh, Kong, I'm going to tag him too. I'm going to tag a couple guys that I know were military and also are uh, uh, MMA or have done MMA. So, let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Holla at your boy.